and welcome to Wednesday Debate Live with Taghreed Hussain here on Nile TV International. Uh, tonight uh, we'll be having all the honor and pleasure to talk our long partnership and common aspirations with a very dear uh, country. Uh, tonight we'll be flying to the Emerald of the Equator with more than 18,000 islands, 300 languages, to the country offering many adventures. Welcome dear viewers to Indonesia with its bustling charm. The very place that was chosen as the venue to hold the World Tourism Day 2022 to see how the world can improve tourism to a far better degree. Welcome to the charming, exquisite place that awakens parks and awakens also positive vibes and energy. Welcome to Indonesia with its vibrant culture and its exciting local experiences that offers you the best place actually to enlighten creativity. Tonight we'll be uh, celebrating together the 75th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Egypt and Indonesia. We're having all the honor to be uh, hosting a very dear friend uh, to Nile TV International and our guest of honor tonight, His Excellency Ambassador Lutfi Rauf. Uh, the Indonesian ambassador uh, to Egypt. Thank you so much, Ambassador, for coming tonight. It's a great honor to be here. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alaikum assalam warahmatullahi Thank you so much, Ambassador. And uh, uh, together with my guest of honor, His Excellency Ambassador Lutfi Rauf, Indonesian ambassador to Egypt, uh, we'll be uh, talking more about our bilateral cooperation. We'll be talking more about uh, the story of success that binds both nations, Egypt and Indonesia. But before, let's have a look at the top stories of the day as His Excellency President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, delegated Defense Minister Mohammed Zeki to take part in the commemoration marking the anniversary of the late Egyptian President Gamal Abdel Nasser. In an authentic military tradition, the Minister of Defense Mohammed Zeki laid a wreath at the tomb of late President Nasser. Defense Minister Mohammed Zeki conveyed the greetings and appreciation of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and the Egyptian people to Nasser family in recognition of his patriotic and devoted efforts to raise Egypt's status at the regional and international levels as well as his courageous endeavors to support Arab people in their quest for independence and freedom. Zeki stressed that the memory of late President Nasser will remain a role model for future generations in the struggle and in the sacrifice to achieve social justice and to meet the aspirations of the great Egyptian people. We'll be talking about Indonesia's historic relations also with late President Nasser. And throughout history, it has always been a story of friendship and success with Indonesia. But first, let's first see uh, this upcoming report that hi highlights actually 75 years of Egyptian-Indonesian diplomatic relations. Let's watch. The Embassy of Indonesia in Cairo has recently celebrated the 77th anniversary of the country's independence and the 75th anniversary of the Egyptian-Indonesian bilateral relations. In his inaugural speech, Ambassador of Indonesia to Egypt, Lutfi Rauf remarked that Egypt was the first Arab country that recognized Indonesia's independence in 1945, when both countries established their diplomatic relations through the signing of the Treaty of Friendship and Cordiality. The year 2022 is special for Egypt and Indonesia, not only in regards to their bilateral relations but also for multilateral ones as Egypt and Indonesia commemorate 75 years of diplomatic relations. The two countries continue to work together towards more strategic partnerships, developing bilateral cooperation for mutual benefit and a better future. Both countries are actively engaged in promoting regional peace and stability, enhancing regional economic cooperation and achieving sustainable development goals the very things that remain the engine of their relations and their agreement on several international issues. And today, issues such as women's empowerment, climate change, combating terrorism and surpassing the COVID-19 repercussions are among the country's common interests. Throughout the last years, much has been achieved by both countries in the fields of public health, education, energy, agriculture, industry and transportation. In addition, 
There are several ambitious plans offering opportunities for more cooperation between the two countries in the fields of developing services, renewable energy, protecting the environment, as well as new areas such as digital economy, financial inclusion and creative economy. During the past decades, the cultural component and bilateral relations have been characterized by long-lasting relations between Al-Azhar University in Egypt and the Ministry of Religious Affairs and several religious institutions in Indonesia. The main principles that the two countries have long shared are still valid, as both countries are eager in their promotion of peace, solidarity and moderation. We're really honored to have with us His Excellency Ambassador Lutfi Rauf, Indonesian Ambassador to Egypt, as our guest of honor tonight. Ambassador, the 75th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations, a very dear occasion and a very special day, uh, binding bilateral relations between both countries. And uh, today, of course, all salute uh, goes to the soul of late President Gamal Abdel Nasser. Uh, I know that there has been uh, historic relations binding Egypt and Indonesia uh, and binding uh, late President Nasser and President Sukarno also. So if we can take like a historic background about relations. Uh, thank you very much. Um, if we're talking about the, the two great leaders, of course, we need to look at that a little bit uh, far uh, many years back. Yeah. As uh, mentioned before, that of course, Indonesian people always remember how Egypt support our struggles even before independence. Um, even I think in the around 1920s, uh, this kind of uh, ideas and aspiration has been also conveyed to Egyptian. Egyptian people, especially the youth movement at that times, because we were experiencing the same thing under foreign, uh, uh, how to call it, the controls or, or uh, dominations. So this is where the start of the, the Egyptian people know and understands about the suffering we have during the colonizations. It is therefore from their own, the, 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 uh, the presence of Indonesian students here, the youth, with the counterpart from Egypt's uh, youth movements also, uh, inspiring our, our uh, struggling to gain our independence. It is therefore, it is just not coincident why Egypt is the first Arabic country who recognized the newly mm -hmm. proclaimed independence of Indonesia, 17 of August, 1945. Not yes. stop there. Mm -hmm. And then if we're talking about uh, the President's Nasser, it is a legacy yes. to both Indonesia and Egypt, to be honest. Because these two leaders with their, uh, his friends, very close friend, President Sukarno, start to think also in the collaborative way, mm -hmm. how to free the people in Asia and Africa out of the colonization because at that time most of the Asian African countries are under colonization. It is therefore General Nasser and President Sukarno initiate and convene a meeting in Bandung back in mm -hmm. 1955. We call it Asia African Conference yes. with among other leaders that come to, 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 uh, to, the, to Bandung to say that it is time for us to cooperate. One of them I think to, to bring all those colonized countries in Asia and Africa to be independent. Mm -hmm. And then one of the uh, issues that still now become an issue for us, a kind of homework, yeah. there is still one country now that attended as an African Congress but not yet mm -hmm. independence, that is Palestine. That was, I think, still uh, our duty and responsibility to continue to help the Palestinians to gain their independence with two state solutions. Yes. 
So again, if, we, if I can repeat once again that General Abdul Nasser, President Nasser, is well known in almost Indonesians people mm -hmm. because of uh, his closeness and the works with the President Sukarno during that times. Yes. And from this one, of course, not stop there. Mm -hmm. The two leaders and other leaders continue to aspire, inspire other nations, mm -hmm. especially during the Cold Wars, that bring about the establishment of non-aligned movement, which is until now still relevant to mm -hmm. the current world and global affairs with probably, I think, around 140 member countries, the majority in the United Nations, actually. Mm -hmm. So this is, I think, yeah. that us, a young generation, have to know about the legacy, about the works of the past, the two leaders that bring our country and many other countries in our, our uh, how to call it, uh, progress now. Yes, definitely, Ambassador. It has been a great relations throughout the whole year that further developed. And in 2015, President Abdel Fattah Sisi paid a visit to uh, Indonesia's Jakarta. It has been a turning point since then and a milestone in opening a new chapter of bilateral relations between both countries. Uh, well, uh, His Excellency held during that time bilateral talks with his Indonesian counterpart and signed memos of understanding between both countries. And we're still following up definitely on our solid foundation and the fruits of that important visit? The visit, I think, uh, back in September 2015, give more impetus em and emphasize the importance of the bilateral between the two countries. During mm -hmm. the visit, I think the two leaders reiterate their commitment to continue to work closely to deepen the relations and cooperation in many fields. Among others, of course, both in bilateral, regional, and, and multilateral levels. Another uh, important issue that you mentioned, and also uh, the, speak, uh, the, the, the speaker, report, the report yes. uh, mm. raised up before, is yeah. that uh, our two countries also work closely. Yeah, here in, is a flashback of that important visit uh, yes. by His Excellency. Uh, President Abdel Fattah yes. Sisi to Indonesia, uh, holding uh, talks with his Indonesian counterpart and signing memos of understanding between the two countries relating into the different sectors, meeting also the Secretary General of the Association of the Southeast Asian Nations, the ASEAN, yes. and uh, also uh, many other presidential activities. It was a very successful visit, Ambassador. Yes, yeah. uh, of course, one of the uh, issues that also uh, discuss at that time is how the two countries continue to work in promoting uh, Islam wasatia, moderations mm -hmm. in Islam, of course, and also counter uh, terrorism because this is, I think, is a kind of global threat that we, we have to continue to work on. Mm -hmm. Other than that, of course, uh, continue to work in the, uh, 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 on the economic, cultural, and many other uh, issues. It is therefore now our, our duties, our duties on a working level to implement or to work on those commitments, those uh, talks that have been agreed between our two leaders. And, and of course, we need to do it on both sides. Yeah. We need to, to tango. That's yeah. what we call it. Yeah. Because uh, we cannot just say the relation between the two countries culturally and historically is very close. But if we don't do anything in a concrete programs and action on the ground, I think, you know, uh, that kind of commitment will, will prove nothing mm -hmm. from my perspective. Yeah. That's why we have to continue to work together. Yeah, we are continuing actually to work together uh, and having seeing eye to eye on more than one important level. And since Your Excellency have mentioned uh, uh, the Wasatea, and uh, here, of course, we have uh, many Indonesian students uh, in Egypt <coughs> studying at Al Azhar, Sharif Al Azhar University. and. Uh, there has been great relations between Egypt and Indonesia in that sphere and also uh, with Al-Azhar, uh, memos of understanding and uh, uh, definitely in, in the move that Your Excellency was talking about, which is fighting terrorism. That's one of the issues that's been discussed between the President of Indonesia and President of uh, Egypt during the visit. is about advancing and deepening cooperation and education because mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, Egypt, 
is a place for around now 12,000 Indonesian students, mm -hmm. the largest in, 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 in probably in, in many other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, mostly they're studying in Al Azhar. It is therefore, from our perspective, is that Egypt is well known almost among Indonesians because of the Al presence of the students studying here as far as back in 18th century. Yes. That's why many people, many parents in Indonesia aspiring to send their, their kids to study in Al-Azhar. The reason why, because Al-Azhar also has a kind of missions and values related to the, 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 the teaching of Islam. The true teaching of Islam is Islam wasatiyah, moderations. That is from our perspective also closely, uh, uh, how to call it, correlate, closely similar to the values of Islam that the mostly the majority and the mainstream of Islam in Indonesia also are their practices. Mm -hmm. Because Indonesia is, as you mentioned before, it probably is the most diverse country in the world in any category. Yes. Around almost probably more than four, 400 ethnicities speaking around 700 languages living in the 17,000 or 18,000 islands. That is reflecting that you know, uh, the Indonesians respect to each other, no matter what is the big ethnicity, the religions, of all religions has been there, I mean, you name it. You have a Christianity, a Protestant, Catholic, Hinduism, uh, even before Islam came, Hinduism, protest, uh, Protestant, Catholic, and Buddhism already, already mm -hmm. exist in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So Islam came in Indonesia through adaptation to the local cultures, well received, not by, by force. Yeah. through trading and cultures. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think that's a, very compatible with the values and the teachings that Al-Azhar uh, bring about and uh, promote and Indonesian also uh, adhere to this kind of values. Yeah, it has been a beautiful celebration at the Indonesian Embassy in Cairo, Your Excellency celebrating the 75th anniversary of our diplomatic relations. Um, they, they even, many people attended, they said it was very crowded and this definitely reflects Egyptians' love and admiration uh, to your excellency and to uh, uh, our dear brotherly uh, country, Indonesia. Uh, on your behalf, uh, your excellency stated in your speech that this year is special as Egypt uh, will host COP27 of climate change in Sharm el Sheikh and also stated uh, before that environment and working on uh, sustainable development is considered to be a uh, key focal points in our sense of cooperation. So uh, it's a while to go to COP27, Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt, and this is uh, uh, actually the main headline. So uh, all eyes are going to be watching the mother of the world and, uh, and the COP27. Uh, What's in store between us? Yes, uh, it's just true. During that time, it's a very important event because this year, besides we are celebrating our uh, Independence Day, uh, 70th uh, seventh anniversary, mm -hmm. in fact, we are also celebrating the very important event in our relationship, bilateral the establishment of diplomatic relations with the two countries already 75 years. Yeah. And that's why we, we, at that time, I say we have been working together closely as a friend for the last 75 years. Let's continue. Mm -hmm. to work on because with so many potential out there need to be worked on for the next 75 years and beyond. Yeah. And it is therefore I told our colleagues, our brothers, friends at, at that time, I say, look, it is you who can bring a meaning mm -hmm. to this relationship. Look at the paradise here. Yes. Here. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> so because, because of this, mm -hmm. I say, you are the one who contribute to deepen and to advance mm -hmm. our bilateral relationship. That's why at that time I used the opportunity to express our sense of gratitude and thanks to those friends who contribute and mm -hmm. play a role in moving ahead, in advancing a bilateral relations, uh, not only just for 75 years, but yeah. beyond. Yeah. 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 Here we go. Uh, this is, I mentioned beautiful. before, uh, yeah. uh, you know, this is the, 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 the proof that before Islam came, the Hinduism already come there. Mm -hmm. Buddhism, uh, this is, I think, it's a lovely body. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, how so, beautiful, you know, we, uh, yes. we, we have here also lots of Egyptians are quite yes. interested in Indonesia, the Indonesia tourism, Indonesian culture. We had also Egyptian honeymooners yes. as we were talking, like, going to Bali. Yes. Uh, so. like, likewise, many Indonesians came here to, to, to visit uh, Egypt uh, because of the, we call it the spiritual uh, yes. tourism. Yes. Because so many historic uh, places uh, here, so Egypt Saint is Catherine. a kind of, mm. yes, mm -hmm. uh, Egypt is a kind of um, uh, the mud of civilizations. Yeah. Egypt also is a place where, you know, the, the prophet uh, Muhammad uh, descended Salaam also and many others, uh, mm -hmm. Islamic uh, monument here that the Indonesian people love to come. And then beside that, also many Indonesian visiting, you know, the places like uh, Jabal Musa, mm -hmm. uh, San Katerin. Yes. Uh, I remember last time about 6,000 years uh, before COVID. Yeah, uh, well, uh, lots and lots that bind us, Ambassador. 2022 is going to be also special to Indonesia because Indonesia is going to be hosting the G20 yes. summit. So um, the significance definitely, and uh, this is going to bring the world to Indonesia as well. So you mentioned before that 2022 is very important for both us in a multilateral arena. Yes. Uh, uh, Egypt uh, is hosting as a presidency of uh, COP27. At the same time, the same month, Indonesia is hosting as a, a chair of G20. In both events, both events, one of the important issues is going to be discussed is about environment. You mentioned about uh, before about environment yes. as climate change. And renewable energy also. Yes, we have yes. That's all included on that. Mm -hmm. So the main theme of the Indonesian presidency uh, on environment on G20 is about climate sustainability and mm -hmm. also uh, uh, energy transition. There's also uh, the agenda is going to be put forward by uh, uh, presidencies of uh, Egypt on COP27, some may say, inshallah. And then one of the very important elements here that Egypt's presidency already emphasized from the beginning is reiterating the need to accelerate mm -hmm. the climate uh, uh, actions yeah. in all fronts namely adaptations, uh, loss and damage, mm -hmm. mitigations, and finance. Yeah. But in addition to that, Egypt's in, uh, presidency make it very clear, the implementations, mm -hmm. all the commitments that has been agreed upon before, even during Glasgow meetings, mm -hmm. has to be implemented. And also including on this implementation is that bring support mm -hmm. to a concrete actions to the developing countries that actually suffering uh, a lot about this uh, from this kind of climate change. So I think uh, this is very important to emphasize that, that all parties involved to support uh, the agenda for uh, COP27 under the presidency of Egypt, implementations. Yes, uh, it's time for implementation. We do have a vision and definitely it's time for implementation. Uh, also, another important, uh, you know, segment of uh, that binds us together is culture and the soft power. Uh, Egyptians are very much interested in Indonesian culture, Indonesian music, and the Indonesian beat. Let's enjoy together, Ambassador, the Indonesian beat tonight. How about that? More than happy to hear that. Thank you. And also, of course, we love very much about the cultures and music of Egypt. Yes, let's enjoy the Indonesian beat here on Wednesday Debate Live. Stay tuned. Yes, uh, Ambassador, Indonesian vibes are uh, uh, really nice that we have enjoyed. We're still having with us our guest of honor for tonight, His Excellency Ambassador Lutfi Rauf, Indonesian Ambassador uh, to Egypt. Your Excellency, we talked bilateral relations throughout history and uh, the sense of cooperation. There has been definitely uh, His Excellency Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri was in Jakarta also seeing eye to eye. Uh, with his uh, Indonesian counterpart on more to come. Trade and economy, how about that? Lots of incentives, of course, uh, in the field of investment. Yes. So uh, bilateral relation between the two countries, you know, economic and uh, trade, of course, uh, showing a very, very good sign, encouraging. Mm -hmm. If we're talking about trade relations, it's quite amazing, to be honest, because during the, the COVID, where many countries going down economically, Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, Indonesia and Egypt 
proof that apparently they can manage to, to resist from this uh, difficult time. Uh, it is proven by the economic growth. Uh, despite the fact these difficulties, Egypt still uh, you know, managed to post uh, over 3.4% uh, positive growth. Mm -hmm. Just uh, declined a little bit from five point something, yeah. while Indonesia actually uh, experienced a contraction from uh, five point seven down to minus uh, seven percent. But last year going up again up to uh, almost three, mm -hmm. and then hopefully inshallah by the end of this year is going up to over five point four percent again. What does it mean? The two partners has already proven themselves that they can resist and manage to go through this difficult time even during COVID. Yeah. And then it's been reflected to our trade relations. During this time, in fact, increasing about 56%, both ways, not only one way. And uh, we import a lot also from, from Egypt during this time. Uh, for instance, the major import uh, product from Egypt is uh, phosphate, yeah. dates, and also some other uh, kind of fruits. At the same time, we export to Egypt uh, that Egy Egyptian people need, and even for the export to other countries, mm -hmm. such as uh, coffee bean, uh, CPO, and then also some other products. So, in fact, Egypt and Indonesia is, are not competing. We are complementing to each other. We, we need each other. We, we need the, the products to each other, which is you know, different from one to another. It is therefore uh, we, we try to continue to work, how to continue to explore and develop the opportunities that which is so huge. Mm -hmm. Looking at the size of the market of our two respective country, Indonesia with 270 million people, yeah. Egypt is around 1, 105 million people, mm -hmm. very huge. It is therefore we need to work on how to create more easier environment for our private and business people to continue to do business, business namely together. in a trade, investment, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and of course in tourism. Yeah. Uh, during the visit of the ministers uh, Sukri in Jakarta, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, both ministers uh, managed to sign MOU to strengthen, to put more uh, a stronger platform. Because we have a kind of joint consultation before, but sp specifying only for trade and economy. Yeah. But since we have a lot of potential in many other fields, so it is, we deem it necessary also to, 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 to change it, to improve it mm -hmm. by establishing joint commissions that, that can cover many issues, many fields for our cooperation. Mm -hmm. This is where the minister, uh, foreign minister of Indonesia and foreign minister of Egypt signed the memorandum of standing for the establishment of joint commission. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, because of the importance of the environment issues, yeah. Minister Sukri also signed MOU with the Minister of uh, uh, Forestry and Environment of Indonesia mm -hmm. uh, on environment protection and sustainable development cooperation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that also include and in, in flow, involve biodiversity, biodiversity management, uh, tackling climate change, of course, become a major issue for our two countries of now, course. especially in, in especially uh, now and we are, the presidency uh, of Egypt. To, of to course, waste, waste management, uh, mm -hmm. pollution control, and of course, re renewable energy. Mm -hmm. This is one of the potential area of cooperation between Indonesia and, uh, and Egypt and on renewable energy, especially yeah. we're talking about green energy. Yes, where green the, 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 the government of uh, uh, Egypt also continue to, mm -hmm. to develop this. Yes, definitely we're working on more than one angle, working trade, economy, tourism and culture. What would Egyptian visitors wouldn't uh, want to miss while visiting uh, uh, Indonesia as tourists, Egyptian tourists, I mean? Uh, as far as I know, when we're talking about Indonesia, I think probably most of the Egyptian people still think Indonesia is only Bali. Mm -hmm. It cannot be, I mean, dispute with that fact because Bali already promotes itself yeah. as uh, one of the most uh, popular uh, destinations in the world. Mm -hmm. That's why very famous. 
It is therefore many people come to Bali from Egypt as honeymooners. Sometimes I, I met the people become second or third time honeymooners to Bali because, you know, yeah. Bali offers very unique thing because part of the culture is not something that human made. It mm. is not something artificial because it embedded in their cultures. Yeah, definitely, Ambassador. It has been uh, a great talking about many angles of our cooperation. You could take hours to talk about <laughs> our uh, Egyptian-Indonesian uh, bond forward ever. I know you have lots of aspirations uh, for bilateral cooperation in all domains, and the sky is the limit. I think very much His Excellency Ambassador Lutfi Raouf, Indonesian Ambassador to Egypt, for his gracious presence. You honor this, Ambassador. Thank you so much. Thank you very much once again. Looking forward to continue to working closely with friends, uh, colleagues here in Egypt, to continue to, to advance, to deepen, strengthen our bilateral cooperation that has been already happily existing, especially if we're talking about the celebration of 75 years bilateral relation between Egypt and Indonesia. We want to do more for the next 75 years and beyond because we have so many, so much, huge potential for our two countries in many fields. You just name it. God bless you, Ambassador. Forward ever, Egypt and Indonesia. Uh, I'm Tahirit Hussein. Thanking you all for watching. Thank you very much. Shukran, Jasir.